So, here's something you don't see every day. We dove Stella Maris, which is the house reef behind Lions Dive Beach Resort and the Ocean Encounters Dive Shop. The site is named for the Stella Maris Wreck, which lies well below recreational dive limits, but can be visited in the substation Curacao mini submarine. Hopefully, the visibility at the wreck was better than the reef that day. We actually had some pretty good visibility early in February. Some days we could see over 100 feet, which made it relatively easy to spot some of our first time captures. One of which was this ornate blue crab. Looking out over the shallows, this guy looked like it was hailing a cab. It turned out to be hailing me, and when I didn't come closer fast enough, it decided to swing by and check me out. This gray triggerfish also came close, but kept a cautious eye as it swam by. By the way, they have blue dots and lines on the upper body and fins, while ocean triggers do not. Waiting patiently does pay off sometimes, as we saw this blue angelfish hanging around some rocks for protection. Once it realized we weren't a threat, it felt comfortable enough to swim past us to another rocky area. Speaking of rocks, these next two first-time captures are rock flower anemones. As the name suggests, they can be found in rocky areas, and, according to Wikipedia, their colors can vary from bright green and brown to lavender, yellow, and even white. We've seen sea whips before, but this one looked really nice, and when we went to add keywords to the clip, we didn't find any for sea whip. So, it looks like we haven't captured one before. We noticed this giant Atlantic pyram shell in the shallows on one dive. You know, we are continually amazed by the beauty and variety of snail shells. Our last first time capture is a sun anemone shrimp. Leslie saw this one and called me over. When I took a closer look, there were two, and they were apparently having some sort of territorial dispute. As a quick aside, I picked up a plus 15 close-up lens and am loving some of the results. This is what a sun anemone shrimp looks like up close. Continuing with behaviors, these two grazebees were also going at it, so we hung around for a moment. This clip is actually four and a half minutes long, but we're only showing you the most exciting highlights. They went three rounds while we were watching, before one decided to give up and swim away. This one is less about the fight and more about the aftermath. We noticed a box crab quickly coming down the drop-off and hide under a pipe. When we went in for a closer look, we saw it caught some sort of mollusk and was trying to break into the shell. Not every interaction we saw was confrontational. This green turtle knew exactly where to go in order to scrape barnacles and other sticky things off its shell. Oh, that's the spot. As long as we're on the subject of cleaning, we saw a couple of different barjack cleaning stations at different sites on the island. Oddly enough, the service workers in both cases were juvenile Spanish hogfish. We're not sure if one species prefers the other or it was a coincidence. Either way, we could watch cleaning stations for hours. This one got me a little dizzy. A school of white mullets cruised in for some cleaning by a couple of juvenile French angelfish. As I got closer, they started circling me. I stayed with them for a full 360 degrees when they decided to suddenly switch directions. I continued to follow them for the second round, but ultimately their tactic worked, because when they changed direction a third time, I was getting a bit disoriented, so I went to find Leslie. How about an even bigger school? One of the most exciting highlights this month was this very large bait ball of scad. We decided to visit a site we hadn't been to in a while, and the local dive shop mentioned that a bait ball had been around for a few days. So we went to look for it. As you can see, it wasn't that hard to spot. And it was spectacular. Always check with the local dive shop for tips on sea life in the area. 
While we have seen and shown red heart urchins before, this was the first time we've seen the thousands of tube feet they used to walk. Sadly, this one was attempting to go uphill in a sand channel, and all that activity underneath seemed to be pushing more sand down than propelling it up. Another thing that is fascinating to watch is the ability for sea life to change colors so quickly and dramatically. Leslie spotted this hogfish grazing in the shallows doing just that, taking on a darker red color while eating, and transitioning to a lighter grayish color when moving across the reef. The relaxed pace and ability to become a part of the scenery while shore diving gives animals in the area confidence and even generates curiosity as they get accustomed to your presence. Well, that and not chasing them, which makes them think we're predators. This very relaxed porcupine fish is a perfect example. It let Leslie get fairly close to take pictures, swam between us, and even toward me for a closer look. Unfortunately, time constraints, larger groups, varying skill sets, and excitement levels can make that difficult on boat dives. That said, staying on the periphery can yield similar results. Early on, most of our group crowded around an octopus. We took note of the direction it was going and headed there. While the rest of the group was swimming higher up the reef, we headed lower and had it all to ourselves. However, a hunting octopus wasn't the only uncommon animal we saw. Don from Rebel Diving Curacao took us to a spot she knew with a couple of long snout seahorses. We've seen them at multiple sites on Bonaire, but it was nice to see some on Curacao as well. Equally, or perhaps even more uncommon, was this web burfish we stumbled across in the shallows on the west side of the island. They have such a unique pattern as does this black grouper. They are certainly not the most colorful fish, but the stripes, the shapes, and shading all look very cool. They make rash guards and socks with whale shark patterns. Why not grouper patterns? We also don't see sand dollars very often, so we wanted to highlight this find until we saw a much bigger 8-inch mosaic sand dollar a few days later. Seriously, it was the size of a small dinner plate. Glassy sweepers are always a treat, especially when they're more out in the open. Usually we only see them under a ledge or in a crevice. Initially, we thought this might be a pipefish. It was super small, the visibility wasn't good, and my camera had a hard time focusing. When we got home, we realized it was a juvenile cornet fish. We went back a few days later and it was still there, so we got a little more footage. Another juvenile we don't come across regularly is this very colorful juvenile queen angelfish, which passed in front of us very quickly. Needlefish are notoriously shy. Well, they don't seem to like our cameras. Still, this curious red fin needlefish got close enough for a pretty good shot. We'll close with this. Just like all the other YouTube channels out there, we're hunting for subscribers. Spotted moray eels, trumpet fish, bar jacks, Spanish hogfish, we all gotta eat. The good news is that you can help feed everyone just by subscribing, liking the content, and or writing a little something down below. Whether it's a meal or a morsel, anything you can offer would be appreciated. Thanks. Very cute smiley face.